everybody, in this video, I will present you the basics of embedded programming. So what is embedded programming? Basically, it's managing constraints. As I already told you in a previous video, energy, memory, and CPU. And basically, everything is more or less related to energy. Okay, more memory means more space, but also means more energy. And more CPU also means more energy. Okay. And it also means something that is called cross-compilation. Not always, but often. And typically in the case of mobile device programming. So, mobile device programming, obviously, is embedded programming. But it's also user interface centered programming and you will discover the MVC model view controller model. That is very important. But it's also reactive programming. The events can come from the user interface but from other peripheral and you have to react to this. Let's have a look on cross compilation. Let's imagine you are developing on a mainframe, on a main comp comp computer that has a given architecture. But let's imagine that you have to create code that will execute in another architecture. So the conditions for cross compilation is when you create a program on a given architecture that is different from the target one. Typically, this situation. So it means that for example, here, by pure hasard, on an Intel processor, I have a program that creates code, but the code will have to be executed on a ARM processor. Okay? So it means that you can test and debug at that level, but then you are using an emulator that probably compiles the code into the native processor, so an Intel one, not exactly in the execution condition on the device, but you can get at least a way to debug the logic of the application. It will behave the same. Okay. Then you will want to cross compile into the mobile device and you will transfer the binary files to the device. And if you want to debug on the device, you may have and this is what is offered by Xcode, a driven debug. So execution is driven and you can retrieve information from what's in the memory, what is going into the program being executed on the device. Of course, this raises some constraints. As I told you, you have limited resources. First of all, memory. Management is delicate, and in fact, you are in a situation where things are easier for you. Android inherits from Java a garbage collecting mechanism. So, you will not have to take care of memory. Uh, this is for me the problem with Java, with regard to uh, memory concern, especially for people that will have to program on uh, uh, embedded systems. What is the definition of memory in Java? The definition is I have memory because you don't care about memory, but this is not true. Okay, this is true because you have now large computers and it's difficult to get out of memory, but it used to be. And uh, on iOS, you have a similar mechanism uh, that is based on totally different principle, which automates the use of reference counters. But these reference counters, they, they exist. Okay, and in Objective C, you can deactivate this, but ARC is possible to be activated on Objective-C. ARC means automatic reference counting. We will see how it works on later videos. And in Swift, it is built in. You cannot even deactivate it. Everything in Swift has been designed to have a safe management of memory. You also have limited energy. So you have to be careful with energy consumption. And you have to be very cautious with some peripherals. GPS is very dangerous. GPS loves energy. Okay, it requires a lot of energy. So it diminishes the lifetime of the usability of your device without recharging. But it's also true with cameras, HDR, flash, etc. etc. And finally, CPU. So you have to be careful 
about the efficiency of your algorithms in terms of the number of instructions. Okay. Uh, because, of course, if you are executing things, then uh, there are some uh, energy uh, consumption. It's of interest to let the operating system manage the CPU as much as possible because it will do it in the most efficient way. Another thing you may not imagine is that you may have some emergency events. When you get out of memory or when you get out of energy, you may receive an event that says, oh, oh, no more energy, 20 milliseconds, and I shut you down. Okay, and you may have to save data. Okay, so you have to, to think about that. If it takes more than 20 milliseconds to save your data, then you will not be able to save your data. So you have to plan that in advance and maybe save regularly the, your data and so that when you really need to save in emergency, you do it in less time that the operating system lets you do. And what's going on if you have a phone call? The phone call is an emergency event. It will suspend your application. And this is also true for some tablets because you have mechanisms such as FaceTime that also generate such event on the tablet. There are also other programming issues and these programming issues are becoming more and more important. The first one is the ergonomics, the ease to use of an application. And for that, you better have to respect the traditional look and feel of the operating system. You can invent something totally new, but then it may hinder the use of your application by people that are used to another way of using applications. You have a graphic chart to respect and you have dedicated mechanisms and We'll see later that if you do not respect that, you may be fired from the Apple Store. You also have to deal with reliability. In Steve Jobs' mind, when somebody installs a Crash Me application on his phone, and if his phone is crashing, he doesn't wonder why. The problem comes from the phone. Okay? So, one of the objectives of the Apple process is to avoid applications that crashes. Okay, and typically you may have problem with memory, even with automatic reference counting, etc. You may have trouble with memory. So you have to be sure that your application is reliable. Another concern, which is more and more true every year, is security concern. The protection of personal data. You must ensure, thanks to dedicated APIs that are evolving very quickly, that your application will not let personal data leak out from the terminal. And also you have to deal a little bit with performance. So beware of algorithm complexity uh, because if your application is too slow then the user will be upset and then the user will drop your application and then the application will not be a success. As a conclusion you have to care about all these concerns when doing programming on mobile devices. And this is important, this is a key for your application success. Okay, you may have heard success stories with uh, young kids uh, having a nice idea of a small game with a realization that was uh, okay, but just okay, and they were earning hundreds of thousands of dollars in a few months because it was a success. Okay, it used to be true. Now, you still need the good idea, okay? But the good idea needs to be neat, to have a nice development, to be good looking, etc. So you have to care about all the concerns I just mentioned, okay? So you have to be this compromise, you have to be, to do some equilibrium between this compromise, because on the one hand, uh, you will have uh, more uh, people enjoying your applications, and if you sell them, you will make more money. But on another hand, Apple may find reasons to reject your apps from your mistakes because they decide that they only want good quality application. Thank you very much for your attention. See you later.